Welcome to last episode in this series of Thinking Tackle. I'm Ali Hamidi and as you can see, the clobber is very different. The location is absolutely unique and we're here to see a very special guest for this episode. He's a reality TV star, he's a nightclub owner, he's an all round nice guy and rumour has it, he's in a quiet room just around this corner doing exactly what he does best. What do you want? I mean, to see the boss about his tackle. Coming in. Mr. Okay. Mick Norcross, how are you doing, mate? I'm good, Ali. You all right? It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, and I never thought I'd be in the gentleman's club doing something for Thinking Tackle. Well, there you are. You're here. And I bet you never thought you'd be on a fishing show. Never thought I'd see you dressed like that, man. Don't be like that. You've seen me before, <laughs> haven't I you? Have. Put, putting I it on, have putting seen it on. you cutting the rug. Look, it's amazing to have you on, but I want people to know a little bit about your actual sort of life fishing-wise, because uh, a lot of people see you as the sugar daddy, you know, yeah. reality TV star, um, not often associated with being on the bank. Most no. people think it's boring. That's where I'm most at home, to be honest with you, on the bank. How long have you been doing the greenery. It? Well, I've been fishing for years, to be honest with you, but not carping, not proper carping, maybe just a couple of years, two or three years at the most. And both my younger kids have got um, PBs better than mine, so it's about time I stepped up the game. So talking of PBs, what is your personal best carp to date? Dare I say 14 pound. So we can have a crack at beating that, but what we're going to try to do on this show is it's the last one in the series, we're going to try to strip it right back and go back to the basics because, you know, you're a famous face, but you're also a mad keen fisherman and we're going to try to sort of give you a few things that hopefully next time you go fishing on your own, you can apply to it. So we're running out of time. I'm going to get down to the lake and do what I do best. Well, now? Yeah, now. I'm going to leave you to do what you do best All and right. hopefully in Manana. I'll Is see that you. the morning, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Bit of Spanish for you. I'll see you bright and breezy. Do you think you can make it? I should be there. Good Trust man. Trust me, I'll be there. How are you doing? You alright? Good mate, good. good nice good. Uh, quiet night right. in the bivvy on my own. Did you enjoy it, did you? Yeah, it was good. Didn't fish, just uh, <laughs> chilled out for a bit. I ain't been to bed yet, mate. I've been late night, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> bit of a late night. I bet you had to get your gear ready. No, no, I've got some milk for that, look. Should have known you had something like this up your sleeve. I thought you'd like that. Now, what exactly are they here to do? They've come to set the bivvy up for me. Obviously, push the barrel and bring all the equipment. It's a bit hard work in it for an old man like me to bring <laughs> all that along. That's why I got my honeys to help me. They set the bed up and put the stove on, and then we'll do a bit of fishing. You got it all planned out. Let's do it then, eh? <laughs> There, girls, I'm really impressed. It's looking good, isn't it? It's fantastic. We've Did been tested it all out, all the bed, and that is all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm gonna like collapse on me or anything we when I get in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. no rat holes yes. either. No rat holes, that's really important. I'm scared of things like that. <laughs> Go on, in, girls, you can go and get some lunch now. Uh, thank, thank you. See you in a bit. See you, babe. Thanks, Thanks Mick. See you, Jess. See ya. Bye, Bye, Bye. See you later. Well, you've sent your uh, women off. Having nicely set up your bivvy and everything. I was spoiled when I was really pleased about the honeys doing that for me. They've yeah. done a great job. You definitely know how to do it in style, mate. I think yeah. there's a few carp anglers at home that will wish they had the... Uh... That's how we roll, but I'm actually looking forward to getting back to basics, getting in the bivvy and fishing and, uh, and roughing it a bit for a little while. Yeah, because you've never done a night, no, have you? No, never done a night's fishing, no. So this is the first time. What do you think of the venue? Oh, it's a lovely lake. It looks really well cooked and uh, plenty of fish rising, so I'm looking forward to good things. Absolutely. Well, just to put you 
in context of where we are, we're at Birds Green Fishery in Essex. This is actually the home lake, so it's away from the other day ticket lakes on the complex. It's still a day ticket with a difference. Basically, you can book this lake amongst two or three friends, four of you if you want, there's enough space for that, definitely. Mick and I have got it, just the two of us, which is ideal because it's gonna give us plenty of options. Swim-wise, Mick's plotted up in the first swim that you come into. The reason, shallow water, yep. sunny days, and, uh, you know, I think it puts your rigs closer to the fish, doesn't it? More chance for me, eh? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I need. Absolutely. So there's so many opportunities when you look around the lake. To his left-hand side, nice weedy margin there, Mick, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is, yeah. And you've seen a few fish already, haven't you? Yeah, there's been a few. I'm looking at some big ones now rising up <laughs> over there. Look. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's really exciting. And then just turboing around to where we are now. This is, this is my swim. Hopefully, for the next couple of days, if we've got location right, um, typical island cutting through the center of the lake it's always worth having a rod on the island spot and i've already baited sort of throughout the morning along this front and basically going right along the front of the island out to the open water there's some bits of weed and the owners told me and i've had a little plum around there's a bar that comes off the edge of that island like a little spit of shallow water and it peters off into the open water in front of mick so you've got almost three foot coming off the bar going right down to five foot so i'm actually in this heat I'll be fishing right on top of that gravel bar because I want that rig as close to the fish. So that's going to be the starting point. So Mick, baiting time. We'll yep. Get around there and uh, put some bait together and go and feed these uh, margins that you're going to be tackling. Can't wait, mate. Let's get on with it. Okay, it's munger time. We are going to have a look at the bait we've uh, knocked up. Mick, firstly, the yellow morsels. Yep. You know what they are, don't Every you? Every fish's favourite, sweet corn. Exactly. That's the one. There ain't a carp that swims that doesn't love this. So this is the bait that we're going to be basically using to sort of put along the margins, maybe spot a little bit out in open water, but really it's just to get the fish going. So the, the first thing we've done is put the sweet corn in. Then we've got some uh, other little bits and pieces, a little bit of hemp. Every carp loves hemp as well, Mick, doesn't yep. it? Um, that really gets it some smaller bits, you know, just to keep the fish pre preoccupied in the swim. Then a little bit of particle as well, so you've got some tiny bits of chopped nut in there, some tears, all these other little bits and pieces. And then pellets, Mick, then some, uh, they're like ellipse pellets, really oily. Why yep. do they like them? What, this one here? Yeah, that's it, and pellets here. Why, uh, just the oil in it, it's giving off the oil, is that right? I don't like the smell of... What is that? Yeah, just again, pe the great thing about pellets is they, they're they not only oily and full of attraction, they also break down in the swim, right. so it leaves like a sediment on the bottom um, and it keeps fish coming back. So for example, if the, if the swim's been sort of emptied of food, yep. you still know that there's going to be, you know, that, that bottom's going to have a little bit of sediment and almost tarnished with bait. So yeah, it gives them a reason to return to the buffet, eh? Exactly, and that, that's the whole <laughs> thing, mate. We were, we were chatting about the buffet yeah. theory. Um, we've got some boilies in there, we've got some, uh, some halves, which we've uh, put through the cutter really nice and quickly, probably about 100 baits that have been put in there, and then some 14 millers as well, just some whole baits. But one of the things was, Mick, we spoke about the buffet, but also the sizes. I, yeah. I, I gave you a little quiz earlier. Why, why would we have different sizes? Just a, a mixture, really, smaller stuff, so some of it stays there and it hangs around for them to pick it up. Absolutely, and, and also, size-wise, it's to keep the fish guessing. So when you put a hook bait out there, they're not used to one size. If I, if I just fed, for example, 18 millers, and then I went and fished a 20 miller over the top, that could work, but if I fished loads of little things and then went and fished a big boilie over the top and there was none in the mix then the fish are likely to eject that because it's different to what they're feeding on by having a real mixed bag out there not only have you got baits that will yep. attract you've got stuff for the vegetarian carp yeah and they're out there exactly yeah, yeah. you've got you've got some the boilies for the meat eaters and then you've got a mixed bag of sizes to keep the fish guessing so when the hook bait's in there they can't distinguish between what's a freebie and what's a hook bait. And just on that buffet theory, you were quite shocked, weren't you, mate, when I said to you that, that, that on the underwater filming we've had... Unbelievable. That some fish don't eat meat or protein, they'll go for something that for uh, vegetarians. It, exactly, mate. There could be times when you sat in a swim, it's a hot day, and people just fish with one bait. They're like, oh, this lake's rubbish, we're not catching. Yeah. But a little handful of sweet corn over the top, suddenly you get a few different fish in the swim that, that like corn, and then they go and get their mates, yeah. and then before you know it, you've got a swim full of carp eating everything. 
So you're going to get fish that that, um, that would eat protein and would eat um, vegetarian food. Yeah, if you or, like or the veg. Or they're all going to eat this, are they? They're yeah, all we'll going to eat sweet corn, but some of them might not eat protein. Yeah, some might come in and peck at the corn. Yeah. yeah. Then you'll get some coming, and then you'll get, you know, if the fish, sometimes boilies are hard to get them started, basically, you know. Yeah. The, the, the boilies are brilliant, and when the fish are on them, they'll nail them. But what you can do, by putting a little bit of corn and some pellet in, it attracts those other fish into the swim, and before you know it, the fish are eating literally everything. And that's what you want. You want preoccupied fish in your swim, and just get them revved up and get them going. Well, that would rev me up. I'd definitely get me fork and spoon into that lot, mate. Good man. So, a little bit of corn twist goo over the top towards the end. And what we're going to do now, it's all mixed in, we're going to go and bait up those margins. Right, we're going to go and have a little bait up of this awesome looking margin. Mick, looks good, doesn't it? Amazing, mate. Loads of fish moving around here. They're all along the edge. So, Mick's going to be casting over to this margin. So, we're going to introduce a little bit of food but the important thing is all about the amount of food now the mistake a lot of people make is they turn up they're going to pile a load of food in and the fish are going to come come in there and it'll keep them busy for too long the key is to put a small amount in yep and then you can always top it up because that's another thing we've seen from all the underwater filming we've done a little sprinkle over the top and suddenly the fish come back in and fish very rarely clear all the bait up you know your hook bait will often be taken before the loose feed's gone as long as you've got the right hook bait on so we're going to put literally this is what we call feeding the chickens Mick. feeding the chickens with the buffet <laughs> so we're just gonna just gonna creep down here and just give it a little just a little dash of bait hardly anything in there handful not even that. Just a little, just to keep the smell in the area. Have a look at that, there you go. Just a small amount. Just keep the fish nice and interested. So when you come back round baiting up, Mick, that's the sort of thing. And then, just that, yeah. yeah less yeah. than a scoop. For all of those chops, less than one scoop, wasn't it? Yeah, tiny amount, yeah. exactly. And, and when we, you know, if, if it ain't happening, then come round and literally a little handful, almost like 10 grains of corn, a yep. couple of halves to boil these, and just keep it topped up. It's hot, they're not going to be in a ravenous mood. Yep. And uh, that should be enough. Right, we're going to go and bait up a few other little spots, and then we're going to start tying some rigs, get them rods in there. After a long morning of uh, messing around, like a bunch of kids. This is it. This is it. This is the moment of truth. So we'll, we'll run you through the rigs and everything, at, you know, further down the line. But the hook bait, just a little hybrid bait, a little pink almond rascal on the end, a little stick. We are just going to goo man chew this up <laughs> <laughs> a bit. Look at that. A little bit of extra attraction. What flavour is this one? This one's like a strawberry one. Let's have a little sample. Yeah. Don't try oh, that at home, kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's I us, mate. Buy that one again. <laughs> oh, Gee, here man, we go. Me so Mick's gone. literally going to creep down and uh, lower this rig in. for dear life. So go it. on, mate. Got that? Watch that hook point. Yeah. We're just going to put it against. Just go to the, you know, the left there, Mick. Keep, the, keep that bag out of the water. Keep that bag out of the water. That's it. And then just, if you can... Just give a little flip forward. No, 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 right. We want it right against the bank here, so... It's close. What, in here? Yeah, come in, come back a bit. That's it. Right, right there. Right there, mate. Yeah. Just, just open there. the bank. Yeah, just flick it, yeah. That's it. Slacking the line off. Yep. Like that. So we're paying loads off. And we're just going to lay it. Lay it like that. That's my new rod wrist. That's it, mate. A bit of reed. It's a bit of reed. It's going to be total carnage. Yeah? Yeah. We're in. We're in, mate. What we'll do, we're going to literally give that probably maybe an hour. We fancy a rest anyway. So sit back and uh, let's see what bites, mate.
well, we've had a couple of hours of uh, stalking, but we've we've already noticed. Yeah, there's a lot of fish around, but they are they are quite sort of uh, scared, if you like, of the noise. You know, with 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 the crew and everyone around, you have to be quite quite quiet. And I think it's going to be a case of getting the spots more settled. So what we're going to do is actually go to the to the, to the main swims, get the rods out for what would be the night, um, get settled, and then hopefully because we've got a couple of spots literally a few yards from your swim, aren't they, Mick? Yeah. So. Close get the rods out and we can come back here and carry on trying to nick one of these uh, wily buggers get this evening, mate. Get all these little suckers off the top before the night's out. <laughs> yeah, they're having them off the top. <laughs> Loads of options. We've just got to keep persevering. It has been a mad day today. We haven't really fished yet properly. Just a couple of hours of one rod. So we're going to start concentrating and doing some proper fishing. Well, I just calculated it's been 26 hours since I first arrived here, and this is the first cast that I'm about to put in. So, same, exactly the same setup as Mick. Um, the little rig I've tied up is an IQ straight through, a little ring swivel on the shank and a hook bead. We're going to show you that in loads more detail later on in the show. And as for the bag itself, very easy. Little funnel web stick there, a few goodies in it, and a bit of pineapple liquid and a bit of raspberry goo on the outside. So hopefully that's going to uh, entice them. I've been introducing pouch loads of boilies throughout the day um, to keep fish hopefully occupied. It's one of my tactics on small waters is to keep the bait going in rather than um, just sort of putting it out when I cast. So steady stream of bait constantly to keep fish busy. And uh, now just this is the island rod. Get this in and uh, get on with the other rods. So here we go. Oh, couldn't have gone any better than that. Bow! Well, good morning, and uh, it has been an eventful night. I literally snared this one a little while ago, 19 pounds. But Mick, your first night's fishing, it's been an eventful one, hasn't it? It's been great, yeah. I had four fish tonight, uh, last night um, from, how big was they? You had, you, you had your first one, the 14, then the 14, 16, 16. Then, a, then a little one. Little one, and then, and then the flying fish. <laughs> the flying fish, <laughs> one jumped out the net. We literally caught one a few minutes before the cameras arrived. Not and that uh, big, about 12 pound maybe, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was yeah. in the, it was in the, uh, it was in the net, ready to show you, and uh, woo, flew out. So we've uh, nicknamed that the flying fish. But this is a nice start, it's my first one. And it just shows, you know, when you use them boilies, it does tend to pick out the bigger fish. Mick's been using the particles down the margins, and uh, he's had a smaller stamp, but hopefully that 20 ain't too far away, mate. Let's hope not. <laughs> PB anyway, that's all that matters, we've had a PB. And hopefully a few more to come. Absolutely. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Well. Mate, I was just uh, baiting up a few spots around the margins, right? And I've come back to, I was just come back to top this one up a little bit. Good job we didn't, because it just ripped off as I was walking around. But this is a uh, swim literally just probably 10 feet from Mick swim, just around the corner. He'd, uh, he was answering the call of nature, Mick. And, uh, <laughs> and I was walking around to it, what timing, but. Here we go, here he comes. Looks like a nice fish. Go on, get in there. Here we go. Yes, Mikos. Another one, one son. Yes. Well done, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Quality. Nice. Can't believe it. Same spot. Another fish. Probably about 12 pounds, maybe. Haven't weighed this one yet. But yeah, no, they seem to be working up this end now. I think Ali will be moving down this end of the lake soon. Very happy with today's result already.
Come on. Head up, head up, head up. <laughs> Get in there. Yes. Well done, mate. Yes. Thank you. Well, Mick, it most certainly does look like a new PB, quite possibly a 20. You reckon? Yeah. So one of the important things are when you get a fish in a net like this, uh, rather than try to pull them out, I see so many people like lift them out in the net, the fins are bent, that you know, it's like having your arm twisted behind your back. Oh, yeah, you don't like that, no one likes that. So what we do is we, we break the net down in the water, like this, yeah, make sure we don't have another flying fish episode. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I always do is just turn this up like this, just roll the net, yeah. We've already unhooked it in the water. And I just check its fins are flat against its body, yep. like that, its pecs there are all flat. And then I'm just gonna put this uh, sling. Birds Green have all their own slings and mats by the lake, so um, on this home lake, so there's no chance that the fish could uh, carry any diseases that are transferred from other landing nets or stuff like that, <coughs> and slings. But just like that, put it into there, yeah? Gotcha. Get the other side of the sling. If there was no crocodiles in here, I'd probably get in, but... <laughs> <laughs> or if it was a 30 or 40, yeah. you might be in with it. But, like, we're just going to check everything's straight, like, make sure its tails are straight, there's nothing, no fins bent. I'll check it, I'll check it four or five times before I actually get the fish out. Once that's done, and then just hoist it up, and it's much like that. Oh, yeah. Let the water out. It was about 40 pound then, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, that's a cheese. It's a that's cheese. A, yeah. Grand fromage. Cool, mate. Got it. <laughs> you ever caught a 20 pounder, Mick? No. This one, my friend, is 20 pounds and six to eight ounces. Get in there. Well, <laughs> 20 pound eight, I'll give you Thank for you, that. Mate. Thank you. Told you it's a 20. Unbelievable, mate. Well, do you know what? First 20 in everyone's fishing life is a real special moment. It certainly is. To capture Can't it on smiling. I know. To capture it on thinking tackle is even more special because you Fantastic. can uh, show it to all your grandkids. Yep. <laughs> all <laughs> and, uh, of them. No, all well, of them. the ones in the future, hopefully, yeah, mate. But absolutely. This absolute stunning carp. How are you feeling? Fantastic, mate. Brilliant. Makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just a sleepless night in a bivvy. Well worth it. And you've got another sleepless night to come, hopefully. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Stunning carp. Beautiful condition. 20 pound 8 ounces, what an absolute creature, and hopefully we can better this one still. It's just getting better and better. Right, let's top that up. Now, as you can see, I'm uh, putting a little bit of a uh, spod mix over the spots. Now, I've started with boilies, and boilies can be a devastating bait. Now, after doing some recent underwater filming, I've already sort of emphasised it before, but it's really important to tell you just how important this is, is the number of fish that can sometimes take it or leave it with boilies. You know, you get a lot of the big ones love them, but sometimes you need to get the smaller ones interested. And obviously we've got mixed spots absolutely rocking now with this particle mixture. And it's got loads of chopped boilies, that hybrid bait in there, a bit of cell. They're really loving that. But it's important because you've got these other little bits and pieces in there just to get them started. You know, you get some of them other fish, the smaller ones coming in, having a little chew on some particle. And then basically the bigger fish will come in and follow. We've seen that with mix uh, 20 pounder. But, um, you know, you start catching a few little ones and then the big ones come in and hopefully we might even have a chance of a 30 pounder. Who knows? But I'm literally going to spray not a, not a huge amount, um, five, six, seven spots over a, a line along that island, putting a bit of this pineapple liquid in there as well. That really helps add extra taste into the water column, bit of colour, a few other little magic bits and it really does get the carp going. We've already seen the difference it's making on those margin spots for Mick, and uh, that's why it's nice to put some spot out as well. So I'm gonna put a line along here, a little bit more over the open water spot, and some down that margin, and hopefully that's gonna get carp a little bit more interested, get him started, and then I'll eat everything. So I'll carry on spotting, and uh, hopefully it won't be too long before Mick or I are bent into another one. Mm -hmm. 
Right then, Mickey boy, it's time to talk rigs. Now, I've tried not to bore you with it too much while we've been here, but it is obviously very important. So, firstly, for the viewers back at home, we're going to actually talk about how we tie this up because this has been the rig we've used the whole time, hasn't it? Absolutely, yep. And it's been working really well. So, let's work right down from the hook first. So, um, the first thing you do is you take off about 12 inches of 15 pound IQ2. That's the, the, the sort of a nice, soft, but semi-stiff material. So, as you can see here, a little bit of flexibility, but it's still got a nice bit of tension in it. Once you do that, take a nice size six, sharpest cap to you can get out of the packet and then proceed to tie a knotless knot. Now, instead of using the uh, tag end to make a hair, on this occasion, you actually cut the tag end off. So you're left with just a knot going back to the eye, just like that. And the reason you do that is because you're actually gonna add something called a little ring swivel. Basically, it's a micro ring swivel. I believe it's a size 16. That threads that with the ring onto the shank of the hook followed by a little hook bead. Now this hook bead sandwiches everything on there nicely. It's very stiff and it holds on there brilliantly. But if you hook a fish, you've noticed, haven't you? It moves out of the way. Yep, it moves out of the way and hooks a fish right through the lip. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> it's a really, really simple rig to tie. The next thing is actually putting on the baits. You'll notice here, it's like a little chewed down bottom bait that I've been glugged up and uh, I know I'll show you how to do them later on. And a little pink topper now this wasn't pink to start with it was actually a white milky toffee but again i've glugged it in some little secret liquids and uh, it is now a pink one so that's the hook bait but to actually put it on you put them onto the actual boily needle put some floss through the eye of the swivel on the micro ring swivel and then actually thread them onto that piece of floss once you've done that um, you just pull it all through and then literally with a granny knot just sandwich that boily stop in place do it a few times and then just blob it with a lighter. At the other end, it's really easy. Put on an anti-tangle sleeve and then just tie it with a grinner knot straight to the, uh, the, the swivel on the hybrid leg clip, which is already all attached to a safe zone leader. I know you've really liked these, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's all on there, really easy to do. <clears throat> and we've been using a nice little two ounce flat pair textured lead and that allows us to, you know, look, you can see already, look at all that debris on there. We've been, yeah. You know what you're fishing on. So we know in this occasion, the rod I, I pulled this out from, this was on clay and everything else. So it's a good little indication yeah. of what we're fishing in. It takes in that, that bottom as well. So Mick, now that you've used it a bit, I bet you've been wondering like what, how it works. Yeah, well, it's been successful, but I mean, why, why have you chose that setup? That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, well, basically, a lot of the, you know, I keep telling you about this underwater filming that we've recently done. And uh, back in the day, if you like, a few years ago, I used to have a very similar setup, but at this end of it, I'd always have a little bit of braid that I'd actually join to this, to this um, fluorocarbon. Yeah. Okay. Now, on this occasion, having seen that footage, I noticed that the ones with just this fluorocarbon straight through, was definitely sort of helping convert more pickups into takes. So I told you, you know, the amount of times fish pick it up, yeah. spit it out. And the other important thing is to have a rig that kind of resets itself because what you have to understand is that fish take it in and spit it out all the time. And, and it's, if you add a bit of braid on, for example, you imagine like a flexible bit of braid, yeah. fish sucks it in, spits it out, or a fish swims past and it all sways up, there's a chance it could all just land just in a in. clump. Yeah, of course, yeah. Now, with this setup, Every time it, it sort of gets spat out or played about with, it'll always just to go boom, back out. Boom out, just like a boom would. Yeah, out, yeah, exactly, because that's a balanced hook bait as well. That's going to always help it because it's slowly sinking. It'll always sort of be pulling away from the lead system. Right. Okay. And not only that, it sits out nice and straight. So when the fish come up, as soon as they suck it up, with that ring, look at the movement. Look, see, imagine that's a fish, look. And in water, that hook point's always going to arc down. Yeah. And the other final important point is because you've got mono with an interned eye, yeah? See, that's coming inwards that way, yeah? yeah? So you see the natural angle of that line is to go like that. So yeah. imagine that as it sucks up, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Trying yeah, to grab it. you in the hooter. It's going right in there. And, it's, and they've it, all been hooked in the bottom, haven't they, what we've had? Yeah, bottom, bottom. scissors. So oh, some, scissors, yeah. Yeah, when you get them in the scissors, <clears> when they pick <throat> it up, they move that way and that that's grabbing them. Yeah. Everything's grabbing them in the corners and, that, and that's really important. And then, you know, you probably wonder as well. Yeah, with, what's this bit doing here then? Yeah, we're fishing in close, yeah. aren't we? So this is an anti-tangle sleeve, and normally you'd use it for fishing further out, but this this not only sort of helps, a, look at the, see the tension yeah. that's giving? So obviously when you're casting further, that stops it from tangling, right? So as it goes to the bottom, it'll always be helping it spring away. But again, like I say, when the fish are sucking it up, 
and spitting it out if it's they do. Resetting. Yes, always. Perfect. It's just aiding resetting it, and it, it's always putting a nice. Sometimes in shallow water, it'll put a nice arc on the bottom like that, and it's just it's cocked, ready. You know, you imagine yeah. like a fish comes up, sucks it up, everything's there, and this is already when it when that goes up, fish sucks it up. That's trying to pull it back down a little bit. It, they're all little percentages. Yeah, it but, makes a difference, though, doesn't it? But after all this underwater footage that we've seen, you know, most recently, it was unbelievable to see how, you know, carp fishing rigs tend to go full circle, and this one is definitely one that I'll be using, and hopefully Mick for a few more years to come. Do you know what? I've been working that, spotting that over the top of it, and um, just topped it up a little while ago. A few more spots. On your far left rod was this one. Yeah, this is off the island. Yeah. The one that got crayed last night, but put a few um, topped up with particles over the top rather than just boilies. And uh, bit of buff a bit of buffet, yeah? Yeah, a bit of buffet you like. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. But it's quite I think it's quite a nice fish this one. Oh yeah, look at those shoulders, oh, yeah. mate. Oh yeah, baby, this is the one. <clears throat> oh yeah. Here he goes. Get out he of knows. There. Oh, it's wide. Oh, I'll tell you what, Don't want to come it's in, really it? close. Oh, what an angry carp. Strong boy, isn't he? Very Do you think strong. he don't like the look of you, Mick, or something? <laughs> I'll put my hood up. <laughs> this is it. Come on. You want it now. You want to get in there. No, no, no. Huh? Yes, go, yeah, on. go on. Go on, we got it, go we got it, we got it. Yes, lift it up, lovely. Well done, mate. Go on, well my done. son, awesome. Oh, that's, that's a actually, big old warrior, whip, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, old Farmer Giles is still having it large in the background on his tractor, and we're having it large with this lovely 25 pounds, two ounce bird's green mirror. Mick, not a bad one, this, mate. Beautiful, mate, really lovely fish yet again. Gave you a brilliant fight as well, didn't this one? An absolute battle royale, and what a way to see us in to the last night. Good morning. Um, it was an eventful night. Caught a couple last night. We had one this morning. We've just uh, got it sacked up, so it's still really early. Me and Mick have uh, come down because there was fish showing, so we thought we'd just keep that fish safely held for a little while while we uh, come down to uh, hopefully have a bit of opportune stalking. We've been feeding this area all of yesterday, back and forth in all these little corners, and they're, I think they're having a go now, Mick, aren't they? Having a go, there's a few there, yeah. So we, we now want to beat Mick's last PB <laughs> of the three he's beaten. <laughs> um, if we can get a mid-20 or something, that'd be amazing. But anything's welcome in it now, mate. Absolutely. Right. It's a bonus, anything it's a bonus. So if I hand you this rod, yeah, and then uh, <clears throat> let you do what you've been doing really well, just laying that rig into the water. Just laying it in. Yeah. Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Right centre. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Got a bit of a twist at the end there. Yeah, that's right, mate. That's yeah, we're free, we're free. What are we talking about here? Yeah. yeah. So, wind it about halfway along that bush. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to lay in. So use the rod as your use the rod as your distance marker, if you like. Yeah. I'll keep it quite short so I can flick it in there. Yeah. You just almost lay it down, I reckon, Mick. I'm going in. He's going in. I'm going in. Well, we've had a good half an hour's worth of stalking, no success, so we're gonna go back and have a look at that fish that Mick caught just before the cameras arrived this morning. But we've had a good laugh, tried to nick one, but the fish are on the surface, they are not really got much interest in doing anything but a bit of sunbathing in the morning. So get that rod in and get round and see that fish. 
there we go. Not quite my PB, I'm getting a bit of flash now, I didn't have to weigh this one. Probably about 14 pound, but beautiful specimen again. Now then, I've been teasing Mick since the day we got here about all these special hook baits that I've been using and how they've been working and what we've seen underwater. And clearly, Mick, you've seen for yourself they work really well. It absolutely don't? works, yeah, definitely. Now, do you want to know how to put them together? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, let's start with the one we've been using. Um, we've used two types, basically. The first thing is the bottom bait part. You notice these are some of my favourite boilies. These are the, the sort of cell activate combination bait that's been put together. And for all intents and purposes, that's a normal boilie. But look here, after they've been juiced up, um, They've got like a skin to them, look, and if I open one up, you can see there, it's penetrated, yeah. it's penetrated in. Now, this is a great boiling, I'll feed these all day long, and I'm not talking about um, doing your, covering your loose feed in this stuff. This is what you're trying to do by juicing these up with these special liquids, you're trying to basically hone the fish straight into your hook bait. So the loose feed is to draw the fish into the area, and that gets them chomping like we're doing, like the, the, the corn and those chopped boilies and also the boilies yeah. on their own. That gets the fish in the area and eating. And what it also means is once you cast out, you're going to get much quicker bites because even though they're occupied with that, they suddenly get this extra smell, extra taste in the area, and they're bang onto that hook bait. So it's really easy to do. This one's got like two layers, so here's a little bag of them, right? Just take, this is a thin one, this is a thin pineapple, right? And you just pour this into the bag. Thin in terms of the yeah, the like the texture, the, the yeah, the con of the yeah, consistency of it. I mean, it's proper pungent. Wow. I mean, have a smell of that back at home if you can put your nose smell to the speaker. <laughs> so you just keep a little drizzle of that pineapple going on. Look, and they're nice and coated here. And what I'm going to do is turn that in there so these all get a good coating. And this thinner consistency stuff is going to penetrate into the core, just like that bait that we showed you. Okay. So that's the, the, in, the inner part of the boilie taken care of. And you could do that three or four times because what you'll find is they'll keep sucking that up. The more you put on, the more they'll suck up. Think of a boilie as a little sponge, yeah? yeah? yeah. They'll just keep taking it in. The more you can get into them, you're turning them into like a ticking time bomb. Imagine them on the bottom just pumping out constantly. With they'll just release. Like a something. little pulse. So once we've done that, so obviously turn them this colour, like this brown tint, we're putting on this power smoke, all right? And now this, one, this stuff's much, much thicker, much, much thicker consistency. And uh, this is where you're going to get that, that sort of brown colour. Look at this come out. It really is a glue. Is same flavour? Yeah, it's still pineapple, yeah. slightly different. And this is where you're getting that real green vapour that seeps off. But by doing it this way, you're actually making it work over a longer period. Because if you just put it on wet before you cast, it'll work for, say, 20 minutes, yeah. it'll be out there. But then once it's washed away, it's gone. By doing it this way, you give them a good coating like this, and then you leave them in the sun to dry, okay? And you can keep applying it. The more coats you put on, the more you're gonna, you're gonna turn them into like a yeah. bonbon. Do you yeah, get what course, I mean? Yeah, it just keeps releasing. Yeah, exactly. And you leave them in the sun to dry, they're gonna get a lovely crust. And when you go out, instead of them lasting for like two, 20 minutes, you're gonna get them working for you between two to six hours, depending on how many coats you give them. Right. But we've used hardly anything out of the bottle there, probably probably a tiny dribble from the top of each bottle, and you've got, you know, 30, 40 hook baits in there that are going to last you a long time. Now, the pink ones, which we've been using quite effectively, this is an almond flavour, and these really were, on the underwater camera, pink in clear water was deadly. Now, I mean, the water's quite coloured here, but it seems to be really effective still here. And this one, again, we're doing two combinations. This is a really thin almond one, all right? That goes in. And this boiler's already pink when you started. No, they were oh, there we go. They were all white, mate. They oh, were, were they? a bit of all white. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, there you go. Look. Yeah. So we. That was a harder boiler. That's not penetrated as much on those. No. So ones. these these acidic ones, they cut right in. Yeah, gets right into the middle, and then basically once you've done that again, you've put the thinner one on, sucks into the middle. We're going to put on this thicker one, right? And again. Same, same treatment, yeah? Thin first, thick after, leave them in the sun to dry, and they're gonna turn like these ones here. Have a look in there. That's got like a little crust on it, yeah? See that? They, see that little bit of a, like an outer skin? If I get one out of there, have a look. It's almost a crust. And really, it's all up to your imagination, you know? You're only limited by your own imagination. You can take, like these pop-ups, my favorite little, 
floater pop-ups, if you like, when I'm fishing on the surface. Again, just giving them a little edge, you know. I'm not saying they were bad before, they were brilliant before, but this is this is something in addition to, not instead of, you know. It's giving your hook baits a new dimension. And um, the orange ones, look, they look like they've got silkweed around them, but actually, that's just, that liquid dried on, and the same with some pineapple ones. And, and that's the thing, it's all about on the day as well. There's not one flavour. You can't say, right, Mick, you know, you go, Ali, what's the best one? I go, oh, it's pineapple, Mick. So know? a certain lake will have a favourite or it won't just for the day. You, 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 another day you'll be using something different. Yeah, I mean, like one, one lake you go to, you're catching on Tutti Fruity. Another one you go to, you're catching on almond, you know, and it's all about keeping up with the fish. And that's mm. what all good matchmen say to you, you know, on the yeah. day, it's about changing it. And, and staying, you know, ahead of the fish and giving them what they want, you know. Colour is really important. Get the colour right on the lake mm -hmm. and then if you get the attractors right in your hook bait, you've got it nailed. Mate, just when we thought we were about to pack up in true hero style, look mate, it's a big one, but I've got a surprise for you. Have you? I've got other people to net this, not me. Jess? Do you want to get in? How'd you pull that off? <laughs> well, they come to help you pack up, mate. Oh, so thank goodness for that. I was worrying about how they're going to right. put that bivvy away. Right, put that out there, okay? Sink, sink it, and then when Mick brings that fish over the net, you're going to lift it. It's a lovely fish. Lovely fish. Don't Ooh, give it too much, that, mate. He knows Don't that net, so I've got to give him a little bit. Get that net sunk, Jeff. That's it. Go on, my son. I don't worry. Do. Don't worry. You'll know. Once it comes over the top, yeah. I'll tell you exactly when to scoop. All right? You nervous? Yeah. <laughs> don't be. Oh, it's a lovely fish, Mick. This could be. It's a shark. Oh, right. No, not yet. Right. We've got a scoop now. We've got it. We've got yeah. it. Go on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is when we high five now, right? Yeah. Well done. Double. Brilliant, mate. That's that is lovely absolutely fish, awesome. It? Quality. Well, Mick, what an amazing way to end. Not only have the honeys come back to greet you and take you home, you've also landed one just before the final hooter went. How are you feeling? Unbelievable, mate. It would have been another PB if I hadn't had a bigger one, but more than happy with that. Fantastic. Have you really enjoyed yourself? Absolutely brilliant, mate. Learnt loads? Absolutely fantastic. Learnt a lot. Brilliant stuff. Well, for more tips and tricks from this series of Thinking Tackle, don't forget to visit thinkingtackle.com. Unfortunately, that's all for this series of Thinking Tackle. Here's some of the highlights, but before we go, we'd all like to thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the bank sometime.